Yeah. Did I get Our speaker today is responsible for upping the cultural level of the wonderful Sebastopol considerably. And uh, we're here to test whether someone who is a night owl can actually do a presentation this hour. Uh, so it's an unfamiliar time to be up for service. So uh, please welcome Kai Boyd from the Rialto Chipotle. Thank you, Michael. Yes, this is a rare sighting. Me up at 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> One of the reasons I became, became an exhibitor or a movie theater operator is I'm not a morning person. <laughs> so this is not my hour. I'm much more of a creature of the night. But it's nice to see all of you. Um, I'm... Uh, um, so, yes. We, you know, we, we came to Sebastopol in May 2012. Um, very happy to be here. Um, you may have noticed we have a construction project going on at the theater if you've been there recently. Yes, there is an end date. I know it seems like it's been going on forever. <laughs> but we should be wrapping up sometime in June. <laughs> you know how construction projects are. You start something and then, oh, the joy and fun of finding things that you never knew existed. <laughs> Um, anyway, um, how many of you have been to um, the Metropolitan Opera Live in HD? Yay! Uh, what about National Theatre Live? Got a couple. Okay. Um, a big part of what we... I forgot how to hold this and not make it go boom. Um, a big part of a growing segment of the exhibition industry is what we call alternative content, which is things like National Theatre Live, Metropolitan Opera, cultural events that are either broadcast live via satellite or are captured live and then um, presented time shifted, which is how National Theatre Live works. And it's, it's amazing the growth of this segment of the industry. Um, we're now doing, in addition to London's National Theatre, we're doing productions from Shakespeare's Globe, also in London. The British are very, are very into this. Um, and then um, we just started doing productions as well from the Stratford Festival in Ontario, Canada. So um, we have King John coming up shortly, and what's the other one? Oh, Anthony and Cleopatra. Interesting bit of scheduling. Within a month, both Stratford Festival and the Globe from Shakespeare's Globe from London are both doing Anthony, Anthony and Cleopatra. I'm thinking we should have a compare and contrast essay contest. <laughs> Anyway, um, I think these, you know, I, I, do, I do some of these talks, and I think it actually goes better if I ask, if I let you ask me questions and I answer them, because then you get to, you get, I get to talk about things that you want to hear about. So um, I guess I'm going to ask, is it the A team you call it? We're going to put the A team back into business. <laughs> Thank you. For coming to Sebastopol. Um, it's just, it's. <laughs> of course. Uh, it, it, it's been just fantastic having the, the depth of uh, presentations that you show. Your support for the Document and Film Festival uh, has just been superb. Thank um, you. We, we really enjoy working. Well, I mean, you, you've really made it happen. And, and, uh, and you, you just have raised the entire level of, of entertainment in Sebastopol. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Okay. Anyone else got a question? Questions, comments, trivia. I just did that, so you have to come over here. So what are you? We have to make sure the A team gets the exercise. Absolutely. So what does the remodeling project consist of? 
Well, um, as, as you may or may not know, the building that we occupied was originally an apple brandy distillery. It was converted by a guy in Mary Jury in the early 1990s into a movie theater. Um, other than changing it from slope floors to stadium seating um, in the middle of 2005, 2006, it really hasn't been touched since then. And so, you know, the carpet's about 20 years old, the paint's all about 20 years old. So we're, we're doing new carpet, new paint. Um, a big part of what we're doing is we are expanding the lobby by about 40%. We're going to enclose the front part of the porch. And part of the reason to do that is we're going to turn the last section of the staircase around, which is in process, so that when you come in, you come in the front doors, the box office will be there, and right to your left, you can see the staircase to get upstairs. We're trying to make it so you're not feeling like you're banished to the Arctic when you go, up, <laughs> when you go upstairs. And it's going to be beautiful. Um, uh, there was an amazing um, moment a couple of weeks ago where they were, they were, they took down all the walls that used to be the, you know, the side walls of the staircase because there's going to be new railings put in that are, um, they, they call them pants for reasons I don't understand. I've learned all sorts of things that I never really knew <laughs> or that I wanted to know, um, and so. When all the, when those walls came down, um, you know the pony walls that go up the staircase, it suddenly is much less like a cattle chute and much more open. And um, we've taken all that black off the windows and the landings are going to be great. We're, we're um, working on an idea for a um, uh, sculpture um, as you go up the staircase from the from the lobby. Um, because there's that, that landing where you have to turn around and then you go up again. Um, so there's there's, a, there's quite a bit of space there. So we've got, um, we're going to do a sculpture of all movie reels and, um, you know, do something kind of creative and artistic with that uh, to give you something interesting on your way upstairs. Um, a couple other things we've done, um, you may have noticed upstairs, if you've been there recently, that we've moved some walls around. Um, <laughs> It's a novel concept for a movie theater for the screen and the seats to be in the same plane, <laughs> parallel to each other. And so part of what we're doing is working to fix that. The first step of that was taking the screen in number seven, which went like this, and the seats are kind of doing a, this kind of thing, and um, getting, getting the screen to be better oriented towards the seats. That was the first step. Now we're working on figuring out how to get the take these triangle shaped sort of shaped risers and make make straight roads. So <laughs> there's lots of, there's lots of interesting things. But the biggest change we're doing um, is we are adding food, beer, and wine to our offerings. So um, we're putting in a full kitchen, which is an adventure and a half. And then um, we are also putting in. Um, all the necessary equipment for food, beer, and wine, you know, for food, beer, and wine, which involves a lot of behind the house, backstage kind of renovations that, you know, have been taking a while and you haven't seen any of, but will be great. Um, so it's, you know, we're really excited about it. We're, um, we think it's going to really transform the offering. It's going to help, help the theater be a destination theater um, so that we can, you know, we want to not only appeal to Sebastopol and West County, but we want to pull from Santa Rosa and from other places. And we do that with our special events, but we like to do that with our movie offerings as well. So that's kind of a long and rambling answer to your question. So, so this is a this is a question that sort of uh, the related to. Uh, Michael's last question, uh, and um, and I'm interested in what your what your um, what, what your perspectives, what your opinion on the future of uh, uh, movie theaters and how Rialto fits into that in this community. Now, it sounds like your community involvement and the sort of special events you have uh, 
fit into that uh, that plan going forward? And maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, the, the industry itself and how uh, the real cinemas will fit into that in the community going forward. Okay. Well, the movie industry is changing. It's always been changing. Um, you know, the death of the movie industry has been predicted since, oh, around the invention of television. <laughs> you know, first of all, television was going to kill the movies, and there were lots of innovative things. If you remember Snellivision and 3D, which is back again with a vengeance. Nothing ever, nothing ever completely dies in the movie business. Um, the, um, you know, and then it, then it was, you know, cable's going to kill the movie business. Home video's going to kill the movie business. The internet is going to kill the movie business. Well, guess what? We're still here. Yeah. And the thing of it is, is that there are more people see movies in places other than movie theaters now than they do see it in theaters, but movie theaters still are the driving factor in the economic equation. Um, and there's also a lot of prestige, there's a lot of press coverage that comes with um, being in cinemas. And so, you know, for that, for that segment of the, of the market, there's always going to be, the movie theaters are always a, always a part of the equation. I think we are going to compete, find ourselves competing more and more, um, especially in the art film and the smaller film business with video on demand where either simultaneous with theater release or you know within a couple of weeks um, films will be available for you know for individual purchase video on demand whether you're doing it through your cable or satellite provider or an internet based provider. Um, it's happening. We saw we saw a glimpse of it with um, Sony's controversial little comedy, The Interview, back at Christmas time. Um, we've seen it um, with other movies that we played. We, we played a movie last summer, um, a movie I really liked a lot, uh, called Snowpiercer. A, I call it a thinking person's action film, because it was a, it was a parable, and it, you know, it was action-driven, but it was really smart. And so, um, and that was in theaters and on VOD simultaneously, and it didn't hurt the theatrical gross. So, um, you know, I, I think it is something that is going to be, we are going to see more and more of that. At the same time, uh, the Documentary Film Festival came, at, came up recently. You know, the biggest makers of documentaries, or the biggest backers of documentaries, are actually television organizations, uh, HBO, Independent Lens, um, Netflix has gotten into the documentary business, and so you know it's great. There, there's a lot of prestige that goes with a theatrical release. Um, how many of you saw Citizen Four? Yeah, a movie I really liked a lot. It won the Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature, and it played theatrically. And HBO is really smart about this stuff, and they 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 had it all planned out. And the day after the Academy Awards, Citizen Four is on HBO. So it was, I mean, I thought it was very, very clever. But I think it is, um, we're always going to be competing with other forms of entertainment. Television has changed tremendously. Um, I think television is a very different medium than the movies, because, even though they're both visual. Uh, we're seeing things happen in television now with the kind of long form storytelling that just isn't possible in the cinema. Environment, um, so it's. I think they complement each other rather than compete with each other. So, and then the other part of your question, um, you know, part of my philosophy of business is we have to do three. We have three core things we have to do: make money. Because if you don't make money, you don't get to continue. <laughs> have fun, and the third thing is doing good. And our our. Our part of doing good is giving back to the community. We give um, a lot of tickets to the way to every, you know, every school bake sale and silent auction and raffle and you name it, we give tickets away. <laughs> um, we also do a lot of special events. Um, the we work at the Documentary Film Festival. We also are the, the home for the Sonoma County Jewish Film Festival. Um, you know, we have a long-running partnership with Sonoma County Library Foundation. We're actually in the, in the shameless self-promotion department. 
Um, their, their annual chocolate and cinema event is the 8th, and they're showing fried green tomatoes. So uh, come have some great chocolate and uh, see a great movie. It's always a nice night. Um, so, you know, we, we work with all kinds of groups and organizations. We've done one-offs with various um, independent, you know, organizations to show different movies. And that, another thing we do, um, it's not every month, um, but it happens at eight times a year, is a thing called Community Cinema. Community Cinema is a partnership with ITDS, which produces independent lens for PBS. And they do, they send us uh, upcoming films that are going to show on independent lens on PBS, but we put together a panel discussion after the film, and it's free. And so we do it, um, like I said, about eight times a year. Um, independent lens doesn't give us 12 movies a year. We would love it if they would, but they only give us eight. So, um, and I cannot for the life of me remember what the April movie is. <laughs> I'm not a morning person, so. Anyway, next question. You, sir, Mr. A.B. I would like to hear your top ten movie list today, and a sentence or two why each of those are on the list. So, is it the top ten, my top ten favorite movies, my top ten movies of the last year? What, 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 what kind of criteria are we working with here? If you were on an appropriately darkened desert island with the right film and five good friends, which ten films do you take? <laughs> okay. Number one, Diva. Uh, how many of you know Diva? Diva is a French film, came out in 1982. It is actually the reason I am an art film exhibitor. Um, I grew up in Great Falls, Montana. Um, when I went to school at the University of Montana, I'd never seen a foreign language film. And um, there was this little theater, well, there was a great big theater called the Wilma in downtown Missoula. And they had a separate screening room off the lobby that they called the Wilma II Jewel Box. Because it's all done like the, you know, the inside of a jewelry case. Sort of conceptual. It involved a lot of red velvet and red curtains and just a lot of red. And then they had this other theater down in the basement. Because <laughs> the, Wilma, the Wilma was not just a movie theater. It's this building and it has apartments and everything. And they had a wedding chapel downstairs. So they took the wedding chapel and they called it the Wilma III, Cinema of the Dove. I guess it was the Dove Wedding Chapel or something. Anyway, it's the strangest movie theater I've ever been in, hands down. Um, the seats were not permanently mounted. They were on skids so that they could clear out because it was a you know it was a hardwood floor like this. Um, and they would so they could set it up for the theater. Um, at, the, uh, at the altar, you had one of those, and remember, this is 1982 or 83, you had one of those seven-foot-high um, pictures of Marilyn Monroe, you know, in the skirt from the seven-year itch. And then you had Clark Gable. And so then the screen would descend, because it was a wedding chapel, remember? And so the screen would descend, and the movie would start, and I saw this movie called Diva, because Roger Ebert had picked it as one of his ten best movies of the year, and it just blew me away opened up a whole new world of cinema. So Diva. Um, Grease, because it's fun, the music is singable, it's enjoyable, you know, and um, I just, I love it. It's, it's can't be fun, you know, it's, it's fluff. Um, uh, Die Hard, because every now and then you have to spend a couple hours with Bruce Willis going, you got it. <laughs> I won't say the rest of that phrase. <laughs> but at home I do. <laughs> Breakfast at Tiffany's. <laughs> to have and have not. How many is that? Five. Okay, I'm glad somebody's counting. Um, let's see. Under the Tuscan sun, because sometimes you just need to visit Italy. I have a whole category of film I refer to as cinema therapy. You know, just, you know, sometimes you just need to go visit Italy, or you just need to, you know, go be in New York with Audrey Hepburn. And, um, let's see. So that's five. Aliens. Um, I, I love Aliens. It's a great film. Um, oh, no. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Um, Bringing Up Baby, and What's Up Doc. That's 
So um, that's seven, I think. Nine. I'm sorry? Yeah, I think you're at nine. Three. <laughs> <laughs> they want to hear more. I think you're at nine. More? Okay. Um, let's see here. I have to think about this for a second. Um, no, I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. Sorry. I'm not a comic book movie fan. Sorry. <laughs> what? No, not really. <laughs> oh, all that jazz. Um, let me see. I'm trying to think what else. I know there's. I know there's more. Oh, um, the celluloid closet. And um, so I need one more. I think you're past, but if you have one more, that'd be great. <laughs> um, Biggie. There you go. You know, I like Cinema Paradise so, but um, I don't find I need to watch it over and over. You know, so, and if the criteria is on a desert island and I'm only going to have 10 movies, there are going to be things that you want to see multiple times, so. A year and a month. A question for you, Kai. Yep. What sort of um, accommodations do you have for the hearing impaired at the theater? Because that is one of the big differences between video on demand with closed captioning and most theater productions. Right. Well, we have, you know, we have assisted listening, and we are working on um, doing um, a thing that we, we had over on Summerfield where we, they call it looping. You do a, 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 a loop that goes around the auditorium so that people who wear hearing aids, if you have a T-coil switch, you can flick the switch and you don't need a headset or anything. You just do that. Um, and we were, we were thinking, you know, we've, we've been working with um, Kenwood Hearing Centers, um, but we're trying to combat a big problem because there's a, there's a, a bunch of electromagnetic interference in the biggest auditorium, number one, which is the one, of course, which is the most important. And um, so we're trying to figure out how to combat that. And they're, you know, they, they looked at it, they measured the EMF, and now they're, they're off thinking about it. And, uh, but, you know, it's something that we do want to do that again. So um, it's in process. Um, I'm going to go here first. Sure. You've already asked me a question. Well, I, I want to thank you for. I'd like to thank you. I was standing up. <laughs> now, there's a question in the morning. I'd like to thank you for bringing the New York Met to, uh, or the Metropolitan Opera to the screen because that's just a wonderful way to participate, something we never get to see. And I'm very grateful that they, in case you don't know, uh, that the libretto is on the screen so you can tell what the heck they're singing about. Uh, those stories are just, they're just wonderful. Uh, Thank but you. Can you tell us more about the, uh, uh, you were talking about uh, theater. How do, how do people learn about that schedule and participate? And do you have a bulk rate, you say, all right, I want to buy, buy in all of them. Well, what we do, um, there are, all the alternative content stuff comes with contractual um, obligations in terms of ticket pricing and stuff. We do for um, Shakespeare's Globe and, oh, I forgot to mention the Bolshoi Ballet earlier. We do the Bolshoi Ballet, um, and we do this thing called Exhibition Great Art on Screen. Those, when we initially offered them, and then we added more globes, which are just starting again, we did a um, discount offer where if you bought five or more of the events in a single transaction, um, you got $2 off the ticket. If you bought 10 or more, you got $2.50 off the ticket. Um, and that's events, not tickets. Um, the Metropolitan Opera, we were actually, uh, we've been doing it since the very first season back in 2007, and we were the very first theater in the country to sell the Met as a reserve seat subscription series. And the reason for that is, is that um, my background and my partner's background are both, we both come from the performing arts, and so we know how to sell subscriptions, and I know in the modern the modern parts of parlance subscription has become a dirty word. Everyone wants to sell you a membership. 
but you know, it's they're, they're just packaging subscription under a different banner. Um, so it's you know, if you can sell someone you know a season of the Met, like ten offers in one transaction, that's a lot better than you know having to go market to them ten times. Um, <clears throat> at the same time, you know, we know that the core audience is people like yourselves. You know, we don't get a lot of teenagers for the opera. And when the, you know this whole idea of the Met first came about, um, you know, even though the idea was that they were going to age down the opera audience, that hasn't really happened, at least not in some of the that I've seen. Um, my thought was, you really, you really want seniors to want, you're going to a you want them to pay at least double the, a movie ticket price, and B you want them to line up so that they can get their best seats. You know, they can get their favorite seats. It's like, okay, let's do this as reserved seats. And you know, if you he who buys first gets best choice of seats. He who buys second gets second best choice of seats. Blah 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 blah. Um, so, and the way we the way we market this is a lot is through our email list. Um, so if you sign up, go to realtorsnews.com over on the, the right column of the page, there's a place where you can sign up for our email list. Now, the trick is, you also have to then go to your internet service provider and, you know, whitelist us or tell them that we're not sending you spam or whatever because, you know, there's, the, the spam filtering has gotten so tricky that, you know, if you're sending out to you know, hundreds or thousands of people as we are, you know, you get flagged as potentially spam. So you have to, you have to, um, you have to tell your internet service provider or your computer or both that, yes, I want to see this information. So, um, and then we also, you know, there's flyers and posters in the theater and um, trailers on the screen and so. And then we also work with various um, organizations. We work with the, uh, the Sonoma County chapter of the San Francisco Opera Guild. Um, we do list trades and stuff with Cinnabar, with Six Street Playhouse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you know, so a lot of, but you know, the most likely, we are our feeling is the most likely ticket buyers are the people who are already sitting in the seat. Because, you know what? They're already there, and it's from a marketing angle, you know, it doesn't cost us anything to sell to that person. Um, so, Anyway, I kind of rambled through your question there. I think I'm running out of time. Thank you, Stephen. I'll stick. I'll stick around for a few minutes. Thank you so much for inviting me.
T-G-I-F? And he looks at her and he says, S-H-I-T. <laughs> and she looks at him and she says, T-G-I-F? And he looks at her and says, S-H-I-T. And she says, no, 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 you don't understand. T-G-I-F. Thank God it's Friday. And he looks at her and says, no, sorry, honey, it's Thursday. <laughs> Thank you.